amyloidosis is the topic for this video. And essentially, amyloidosis is one of those grand diseases that involves a deposition of abnormal proteins in various parts of the body. And this can, over time, go into multiple organs, and that can lead to multi-organ failure. Now, amyloidosis is a very big topic, so I'll try my best to keep it uh, succinct. So where do these proteins come from? Now, these abnormal proteins that are depositing themselves into multiple organs in the body and causing all this damage, they can either be uh, de novo, which basically means the body can just produce them uh, itself, or these abnormal proteins can be secondary to either some sort of a infection or inflammation or malignancy. The amyloid proteins that do deposit have sort of a very distinct feature and that is described by their appearance and that is a beta pleated sheet and this is important because this uh, structure is used for identification purposes and in particular what I'm referring to is when you actually do the staining so for example when you do the staining these beta pleated sheets will stain a different color based on what type of stain you use so if the stain you're using is hematoxylin and eosin, then the stain will be pink. The proteins will stain pink. Now, if you use the stain known as Congo Red, then the amyloid proteins will stain this classic apple green. It's known as apple green birefringence. And that's the telltale sign on this Congo red staining. So now let's talk about cause. Why does this happen? What is the etiology? The first type is known as AL, which is primary amyloidosis. Now primary amyloidosis is caused by a plasma cell disorder. Plasma cells or B cells are the cells in the body that produce immunoglobulins I'll abbreviate it IG and when these plasma cells overexpress in the body they produce a lot of these immunoglobulins and the part of the immunoglobulin that is known as the light chain that is the abnormal protein that goes and deposits in the organs and it can deposit in the kidney or it can deposit in the heart, uh, liver, or even the tongue. So that's the first type. And the reason it's called AL is because of the light chain, the L from the light chain, essentially. The second type of amyloidosis is known as AA. And that is called secondary amyloidosis. And the reason it's called secondary is because this type of amyloidosis happens secondary to some sort of pathology, some sort of problem like infection or inflammation or malignancy. And when it does happen, it produces an abnormal protein called amyloid A. And that amyloid A protein goes and deposits in organs and causes organ damage. And this amyloid A protein is produced by the liver. So that's an important point to remember. And it's called AA because of this A here. Third type of amyloidosis is known as AF. And that stands essentially for familial amyloidosis. And as the name familial implies, this type of amyloidosis is inherited. And this is essentially a abnormal or mutated protein that is produced by the liver that then goes into different organs and causes organ damage. 
And finally, the fourth one is known as SSA, which stands for Senile Systemic Amyloidosis. This one is uh, known to deposit a special type of abnormal protein called transthyretin protein. And this transthyretin protein aggregates and deposits in the heart of older men. So that's essentially why it's called senile, because it's affecting an elderly population. So those are the four types of amyloidosis. So now let's get into symptomatology. If someone does have amyloidosis, what type of symptoms would they present with? Well, because it affects multiple organs, it's very nonspecific, unfortunately, which makes it very difficult to diagnose. But fortunately, there's certain, certain symptoms that can kind of be used as telltale signs, especially if they happen together. And I'll present these based on organ. If the kidney is affected, you're going to have a patient who presents with proteinuria, edema, if the liver is affected, the patient can present with, of course, hepatomegaly and easy bruising is a telltale sign, especially the type of amyloidosis known as AL, also known as primary amyloidosis. If the heart is affected, then you have a clinical presentation of heart failure. Many neuropathic symptoms can present in people that have amyloidosis and they're very important. One of them is orthostatic hypotension. The next is syncope. That's an important one. And another symptom the presentation is carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient will present with carpal tunnel syndrome as part of the symptomatology. And if the GI system is uh, affected a patient can present with macroglossia, which is the medical term for large tongue. And this is especially true in patients with AL, which is also known as primary amyloidosis. So how do you diagnose this? Well, there's several ways, but I'll concentrate on some of the more important ways. The first, of course, is you have to do the biopsy. You have to actually demonstrate that these abnormal proteins are indeed involved in the organ. So you have to stain the tissue, and you do it with the stains that I had previously mentioned, for example, Congo Red dye. If you suspect that the patient has AL, because of the symptomatology like large tongue and easy bruising, then you would want to do a test that's specific for AL. Now recall, AL is when you have a lot of immunoglobulin. To measure that, you have to do a test known as a protein electrophoresis. So this is a very important test to determine the AL type of amyloid. And then the rest of the testing really has to do with uh, the organs involved. You would do the standard kidney tests like BUN, creatinine, you would do a UA, you would do liver function tests, and if the heart is involved, you would do tests such as the EKG, echocardiogram, uh, BNP. Treatment of amyloidosis Basically, the treatment is mainly supportive, and also the treatment really depends on what type. I mean, it's very type-specific. But if you want to look at more specific uh, treatments, it really depends on what organ is involved. For example, if the kidney is involved and you have a presentation of uh, edema and uh, sort of a picture of nephrotic syndrome, you'd have salt and fluid restriction, 
you would give the patient diuretics. If the heart is involved and you have a clinical presentation of heart failure, then the patient will be treated as such. So that would, of course, involve medications like digoxin, ACE inhibitors, um, beta blockers, and diuretics as well. In cases of secondary amyloidosis, of course, you want to treat the underlying process. So for example, if it was AL, that would involve chemotherapy because it's an overexpression of those immunoglobulins. If it's AA, it would essentially involve treating the underlying infection, inflammation, or malignancy. So as you can see, there's a lot there, but hopefully that was a brief and uh, succinct explanation of amyloidosis. So let's look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like. An 82-year-old white male consults you following several syncopal episodes that are clearly orthostatic in nature. During the course of your evaluation, you find out that he has a large tongue, mild cardiomegaly, and findings suggestive of bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, most likely diagnosis is. Well, when I was talking about symptomatology, I mentioned several symptoms that kind of especially when placed together, can lead you to think about amyloidosis, and that's the choice for this question. Next one. 40-year-old woman presents with a several-year history of progressive abdominal colic and constipation. Colonic biopsy stained with hematoxylin and eosin demonstrates deposition of a pink acellular material in the submucosa and around blood vessels. When sections from the biopsy are stained with Congo red, the acellular material exhibits a green birefringence. The birefringence is thought to be most closely related to which of the following properties. Well, of course, we're talking about amyloidosis again. And if you remember earlier in the video, I talked about how the protein uh, that's uh, used for identification has a classic beta pleated sheet appearance. So that would be choice B, beta pleated tertiary structure. Next, 42-year-old woman comes into the clinic complaining of intermittent easy bruising around her eyes and chest. She recently suffered a syncopal episode and, and a workup which included a stress echo revealed a hypertrophic heart with a speckled pattern. When she was discharged from the hospital, she was given a diagnosis of congestive heart failure with a restrictive pattern. An endomyocardial biopsy is scheduled for the next week. She denies any significant family history and has been healthy with the exception of easy bruising occasionally with vomiting. Routine UA from her recent admission reveals proteinuria. Upon further questioning, she has suffered carpal tunnel syndrome bilaterally and occasional numbness and tingling of her toes. The most useful study to diagnose this patient's condition is well, it's a difficult question. Um, a lot of this, uh, the heart failure, the syncope, the proteinuria, the easy bruising, a lot of symptoms of amyloidosis. But one thing I wanted to really point out is that the easy bruising is uh, more common in AL. And if you remember, AL was when you had those increased number of immunoglobulins that produce those light chains and those light chains then go and deposit and cause a multi-organ failure. Now to measure those light chains you have to do a special test known as a protein electrophoresis and that is choice D. And finally a 46 year old female with rheumatoid arthritis develops progressively worsening renal failure. She undergoes a diagnostic renal biopsy, revealing thickening of the mesangial matrix and widened capillary basement membranes due to the deposition of an amorphous eosinophilic material that stains with Congo red. The material is shown to be composed of AA, amyloid-associated protein, fibrils. In which of the following locations is this protein synthesized? Well, if you remember earlier, the AA protein, also known as amyloid A, is produced in the liver.
So that would be choice C.